The NZ2000 FMS 6.1 software update includes several new features and functionality, as well as time saving and safety enhancements. In this video, we will highlight the additions that the FMS 6.1 update provides. FMS 6.1 implements the required message sets to support FANS 1A data link. With FANS installed, flight crews and ATC are able to communicate via Controller Pilot Data Link Communications, or CPDLC. Also, automated position reporting using Automatic Dependent Surveillance Contract, or ADSC, is enabled using the existing ACARS network. Refer to your pilot operating manual to determine if all components for fans are installed and if your aircraft is certified. Localizer performance with vertical guidance approaches can now be flown with the 6.1 upgrade. LPV is a category of approach minimums for RNAV approaches that are typically lower than LNAV or LNAV-VNAV minimums. RNAV approaches with LPV minimums are built on the Satellite-Based Augmentation System, or SBAS. In North America and Hawaii, this system is known as the Wide Area Augmentation System, or WAS. SBAS is made up of GPS satellites, a network of ground-based sensors, space-based geostationary communication satellites, and SBAS-capable GPS receivers. An RNAV approach with LPV minimums combines the FMS navigation database with SBAS signals from GPS satellites to produce an approach that closely mimics an ILS. When LPV is active during an approach, guidance is provided directly from the WAS-enabled GPS. To load an RNAV approach with LPV minimums, select the appropriate runway and desired RNAV approach on the arrival page. LPV is the default minimum selection. Activate the approach to load it into the flight plan. Each RNAV approach with LPV minimums is identified with a unique approach ID. The approach ID on the CDU should be cross-checked with the ID on the FMS enunciator on the PFD, as well as the approach chart. Once an approach clearance has been received, arm the approach using the Approach button on the Guidance panel. Depending on the installation, LPV arm, active, and failure enunciations will either be displayed on the PFD or an external enunciator. It is important to note that the FMS 6.1 update does not permit approaches to be flown down to localizer performance minimums. FMS 6.1 now sequences hold to altitude legs. These leg types are included in procedures that contain published holding patterns designed to allow climb to a published minimum altitude. The altitude on a hold to altitude leg is displayed as an at or above altitude constraint that can be modified. The hold can only be deleted by the crew prior to entering the pattern. Once the aircraft is established in the hold, the exit and resume hold options are not available on the active flight plan page as the FMS controls this sequencing. When the aircraft reaches an altitude that complies with the hold to altitude constraint, the holding pattern is automatically sequenced. With FMS 6.1, charted holding patterns are included in the navigation database. When a hold is charted, it will be the loaded holding option as opposed to the inbound course. However, the hold can still be modified for any other holding instructions. When the crew selects a hold, the FMS first determines if there is a defined hold in the database at the waypoint. When a hold is defined at that waypoint, 
a database hold or a default hold can be selected. If multiple patterns exist for the fix, all available options will be displayed. If no database hold exists, the default or pilot-defined hold can be inserted into the flight plan. A VNAV data page has been added to display vertical performance. Push for right on Progress Page 2 in order to access the VNAV data page. If applicable, the VNAV EPU is shown, which is similar to the lateral EPU, but on the vertical axis. The vertical deviation from the path is displayed, as well as the distance and time to the top of climb, top of descent, and bottom of descent. Temperature compensation allows the crew to adjust altitude constraints for non-standard temperature on terminal area procedures. For example, during extremely cold temperatures, TempComp will raise the altitude constraints since the indicated altitude is higher than the true altitude. When TempComp is activated, the new altitudes appear in inverse video and are adjusted for all of the altitude constraints on either the departure or approach and missed approach, depending on which page TempComp is activated on. Prior to using TempComp, coordination must be made with ATC to ensure adequate vertical separation with other aircraft that may not be using TempComp. The TempComp calculator, which is located on the last TempComp page, is used to manually adjust the DA or MDA since it is not automatically compensated with other altitude constraints. The temperature used for TempComp and the TempComp calculator is based on the temperature entered during the takeoff or landing initialization. Enter an altitude to generate the compensated altitude for that temperature. This has been an overview of some of the features and improvements with the FMS 6.1 update. Please refer to the Flight Management System, Software Version NZ 6.1 Pilot's Guide for more information.